Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Um, can somebody confirm that they can hear me, Sachin? Yes, ma'am. You are audible and visible too. Yes, ma'am. You are audible and you are visible too. Okay, I'm going to. Um, Seema, can you hear me? Yes, Nandita. I can. Right, thank, you. thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so, we good can morning, hear everybody. You, Nandita. Super, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's very special session. Um, for the best experience, uh, click on the icon on the top right hand side of the screen and switch to current speaker mode. So switch to current speaker mode. When you switch to current speaker mode, you should see me in the large uh, rectangle uh, on your screen. And then you will see other smaller rectangles below that. Uh, another housekeeping uh, information. Uh, there is a chat box on the right hand side. Uh, some have already started introducing yourselves. You can introduce yourself there. And then as the session goes on, you can ask your questions. And we have two experts uh, who will be answering your questions as we go along. And if there is time at the end, we will try to take more questions or as many questions as possible. Uh, the intention is that we will answer all questions. And that may take a little bit more time after 12 o'clock. Uh, the slides, it's a very interesting session that we have here today. And the slides and the recording uh, will be sent by Fiki to everyone. So you will get access to that. Uh, don't worry. So Fiki. Uh, Fiki has been continuously engaging with the government, uh, with its committees, and providing recommendations and industry insights back to the members of uh, of Fiki also. At the same time, um, Fiki has been working very closely with academia, with industry, with students and teachers to mentor and guide them to sail through these very tough times that we're going through. In the last few weeks, and I don't know whether some of you have attended it, but Fiki, with the support of partners like Pearl Academy, IR, IRM London, UGC and today SRM also uh, has been conducting capacity building webinars on the use of technology, uh, training faculty for teaching, for governance, uh, for teaching online. Uh, we also had a session with leaders in higher education uh, as to how can they look at uh, online teaching and learning uh, from the larger institutional point of view. Um, in the two faculty training on how to become an online teacher, a lot of questions that came were about assessments because people were worried about assessments and how to take that further. So today's session is focusing on assessments. Uh, I think I'd like to congratulate Vicky. And Shobha was supposed to be here with us, but she's had to go for a government meeting. But I'd like to congratulate the Vicky. Uh, higher education team, uh, Rajesh, Nidhi, Priyanka, etc. And of course, Shobha, who, leads, who has been leading this uh, initiative and taking it earlier. Uh, I am Nandita Abraham, president at Pearl Academy, member of the Fiki higher education team, along with Dr. Sanjeti, who is also uh, here today. Okay, Today, we have a very interesting and special lineup for you. Uh, we will start. Uh, with Dr. Bijan Roy from Meritrack, and he's going to talk about online assessments and their relevance in the COVID-19 situation. After that, we'll have Professor Seema Mahajan, who's Dean Academic Governance at Pearl Academy, and she's going to look at learning outcomes and how these, I mean, how these learning outcomes could be assessed online in higher education. Uh, another very special speaker after that is Dr. Lata Pillay, uh, who is Director of Quality and Rankings at SRM. And she's going to look at different strategies adopted in online assessments. Next, we have Professor Preeti Divan, 
Associate Dean Academic Development at Pearl Academy. And she is going to look at various tools and platforms adopted for online assessment. So this is going to be really an informative, useful session. You'll get the copies of the slides and the recording, so don't worry about it. And we're going to close up with Dr. Sancheti, uh, Vice Chancellor, SRM University. And Dr. Sancheti is going to tell us, how can you ensure accountability and governance in online education? And then how do you deal with regulatory constraints? I think that's another issue that uh, many people have. And we will end with that. So once again, click to current speaker mode. That's on the top right hand side of your screen. Uh, write your questions in the chat box, and they will be answered uh, as we go along. Thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, again. I hope you find this really useful. And over to you, Dr. Roy. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Nandita. I am uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, I'm Dr. Bijan. I'm representing Meritrack here. Uh, as you know, Meritrack is one of the largest assessment service providers of the country. Uh, we extend our services to central government, uh, various state governments, corporates, academic institutions. I'll, I'll, because for paucity of time, I'll still jump into my presentation. This is about online assessment and uh, Friends, this is very, uh, sorry. This is really a difficult time. Our government has extended the lockdown and economy is uh, looking for business continuity plan. Academic institutions are no exception to that. Online assessments definitely comes at the center of this particular requirement. So why online assessments? Why not traditional one? As you all know, traditional assessment uh, creates, brings in a lot of pressure into the system. It brings in pressure to the students, brings a lot of pressure to the faculty, educators, and also the administrator. It is actually evaluation centric. It, is, it has got a lot of logistic hassles. And because of logistic hassles, there are chances of error. Because it is evaluation centric, there are a lot of uh, you know, chance bias because it's done by human. Online assessment is a great relief from all this. Online assessment enables you to take this assessment anytime, anywhere, any number of time. The denominator is much, much lesser in case of online assessment. As a result, the quantum is higher. So the predictability is much, much lower in case of online assessments compared to the traditional format. For the same reason, the coverage is much, much wider. Now, let's see if we really have to implement this online assessment, what we need to do. You see a cycle here. This cycle is the flywheel of online assessment. We need to make sure that it keeps running continuously. I start with design. When I say design, I mean design of the assessment. Any assessment has got dimensions in the construct. Dimension number one, the spread across topics, subtopics, and concepts. Dimension two, the spread across various difficulty level. And the dimension three, the learning outcomes, the spread across learning outcomes, which is actually in line with the Bloom taxonomy. Once that is done, we'll jump into the process of item development. 
And that item development is done keeping in mind usual mistakes, misunderstanding, misinterpretation, misconceptions of students. When you build your items around that, the good part is while solving these items, anybody would go through a learning journey, be it unlearning, but that is an essential component of learning journey. Once we have a handful of such items, we deploy that to a small cohort, collect the statistics. Now, what the statistics are, the statistics actually are on the responses. Now, what are these responses? Responses could be how people have actually opted for different distractors, whether distractors are really actually working as a distractor or not. And basis that we diagnose the fate of those items, whether these items need to be retired, these to be retained, these to be refurbished, or maybe that. Once that is done, then you come back to design, development. So this is a perennial cycle of online assessment which you need to run. The benefit, a couple of things I have already told, predictability, coverage, biases, learning and evaluation center. Reliability is much higher because you have already run the pilot. Validity is because you have already ensured that distractors are really distractors. Yes, it is scientifically designed. Psychometric values are already assigned. So you can, while designing itself, you are taking care of the learning outcomes. It promotes meritocracy. Reason being, today there are online assessments which we call adaptive assessment. Now, our general fixed form assessments are picked at the average level. Whether that is fair, you know, it's a debatable question, but that recent understanding is the best would be we put up the challenge as per the opponent. So the candidates, if their ability is higher, you give them a higher ability uh, assessment. And that is possible using adaptive assessment. And that's why we say it promotes meritocracy. Chance of compromise much, much higher in the traditional form. In online assessment, that is almost nil. Logistic hassles, almost nil. Yes. It is true that uh, traditional format, you can manage huge skill, and but in online assessment, you can turn it around much, much faster. Many times as you want. So essentially, online assessment, whether COVID be there or not, this is required, this is important, this is relevant, and it is more relevant when social distancing actually in place. Now let's see how we can make a solution. Now there are different assessment tools. Question types is the one, assessment methodologies, assessment technologies, assessment security technology, evaluation workflow. Question types today could be 25 to 30 different question types are available. Assessment methodologies, linear fixed form. When we say that the same question goes to every candidate, but in different order, jumbled order, jumbled options. Linear on the fly test, yes, the template remains same, but different people get different set of questions. Adaptive assessment, I already explained. Assessment technologies, land-based, so when you ask people to congregate in one place and then you conduct assessment, maybe online. That is a land-based computer interface. Cloud-based, that is completely internet. People can take this assessment from home. Mobile interface, it is in their hand whenever, wherever they can take that. Assessment security technology, lockdown browser or secured exam browser, that is one of the most important part. The examinees, they cannot access anything other than the exam when while exam is on. Biometric assessment attendance, that is actually taking care of impersonation at the time of exam. Remote proctoring, so camera in the system, be it mobile phone, be it laptop, be it a computer, that takes care of that outside whatever is happening, whether the candidate's face is matching or not, whether candidate's voice is actually matching or not, whether different faces coming, 
whether any other face is coming, you know, such kind of uh, proctoring can happen using camera. If descriptive assessments are still being continued, today we have wonderful solution on screen evaluation when examiners actually maintain social distancing, they can do evaluation sitting at home through their laptop. So today, in today's scenario, if I have to do uh, uh, assessment framework, I would say question type, any particular one, any type actually, a mix of anything. The assessment methodologies could be descriptive, could be linear, could be loft, could be adaptive. Assessment technologies, I have to take cloud or mobile. I cannot take because then people have to congregate. So that's not suggested now. Assessment security technology, I would say remote proctoring. Lockdown browser is anyway inbuilt. And if evaluation to be done, then definitely on-screen evaluation is important. I'll move to the next slide. Now here I have put down a couple of uh, different emerging trends I see coming in the probably the next five to 10 years. Audio video based assessment, game based assessment, simulation assessments, coding assessments with a lot of newer features of qualitative input, augmented reality or virtual reality based assessments, and I can see that days are not far when people will not write the assessment. Probably they will just speak and it will automatically get converted into text. Friends, you know, future is uncertain. And we must get ready to face the future. As somebody rightly said, we must be ready for future. Unless otherwise, however mighty you are, like a dinosaur, we may be extinct one day. I just like to remind two things, which we are actually forced to comply probably today. Despite it was being prodded to us for a long time. Continuous evaluation is one. This is being discussed in different forums by the regulators, by the ministry, but somehow you know, we could not implement that. But today, we are almost complete to do that. Had that been in place, probably today also, this would have been a business as usual. I, I, I just hope that this continues, whether COVID is there or not. One more sound bite we have heard every year for last almost a decade i am following from davos that is industry 4.0 or fourth revolution of industry industrialization or people call it digitalization now that is something where our entire you know code delivery should move through internet covid 19 has forced us to do that and we are actually compelled to do that. I again hope that we don't change our mind. Online assessments is the need, and that should continue. COVID be there or not. I have already explained in my first slide that why online assessment is important. I think that should be there in our thought. I'm done with my presentation, and uh, now I, I I really thank all of you for a patient hearing. I'm sure you will have some questions. If you have such questions, you can just write. I'd be more than happy to respond to that. Uh, I would uh, request my uh, you know next speaker to come along, uh, Madam Seema Mahajan from Pearl Academy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Bijan, uh, you can see me. Yes. Yes. Seema. yes. All right. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Seema Mahajan, Dean at Academy Governance at Pearl Academy. Let me share my presentation. 
what i am going to cover today is about learning outcomes and what we are saying is that why assessments really we have to do and how we can use this platform uh, to really do the assessment easily for students and for faculty so this is what i am going to cover in today's webinar just want to share with you that uh, the entire purpose of higher education or any education is about achieving learning outcomes and there is a triangulation between teaching learning teach, uh, and the assessment and the learning outcomes so the entire plan of assessments is there to achieve the learning outcomes and that's how the students can really see that the purpose of education is fulfilled so we all know about bloom's taxonomy and we all know about constructive alignment i am going to share with you our experience at pearl that during this time of covid 19 we had to transform from the face to face to the online platform for us online platform wasn't new we were doing some part of our teaching learning to a uh, online platform to blackboard but moving into this situation immediately we had to switch over all our face to face onto online so there were some challenges which we faced uh, especially we are a design college so most of our subjects are based on demonstration on prototyping as well as uh, live testing lot of play with material the biggest challenge we faced or the faculty phase was availability of resources unavailability of resources and also unpreparedness uh some other challenges we are having are fear and uneasiness or maybe motivation um and inspiration to go and to learn online uh and technical issues which we all are facing maybe having the bandwidth issue or the connectivity issue but in spite of all these challenges i will share our experience which is positive and how we use this online platform so the kind of subjects we teach in our of these kinds so we are teaching theory based modules tools are where we are teaching skills which could be technical design skills or any other kind of soft skills studio are the subjects where we are experimenting exploring uh, practicing students are both uh, the methods as well as the materials and the projects are the subjects which are dealing with the problem solving so students are taking problems which could be design or business and they are exploring their ideas doing research and coming up with the solution so the modalities are many i mean the online platforms were many what we used was zoom and blackboard collaborate i'll just quickly take you through each and every kind of subject we dealt with theory subject now here the assessments mostly are in the form of either the essay or the questionnaire but what we move on is not only the questionnaire but the quiz uh, multiple choice questions reflective journal so we really ask students to write about their learning in the form of a journal having the discussion thread where they are discussing with each other giving the peer review and simulation and i have shown as you can see in my presentation these are the different softwares which are available to help us to achieve the, these assessments to skill base now here we were expecting we are expecting students to show us the ability to learn the skill uh, so students are sharing screen through blackboard collaborate where teachers are asking them to demonstrate their learning or they are also uh, kind of giving us their demonstration through recording their videos or uh, live through camtasia it's a very versatile tool studio where the i discuss about the challenges before where materials and explorations and uh, practicing is done but what we have seen is uh, we have been able to solve the problem of prototyping through 3d tools like cad or google lab e portfolio students are making their portfolios which they are sharing through wordpress instagram faculty can check that and many other 
projects. Now here, what we are asking them is to present their work through jury. So jury is reacting through Zoom or Blackboard. Presentations, students are making their Canva is a very, very good software where students can uh, work on the presentation, share. They can upload their work on OneDrive uh, and the faculty can evaluate. A very uh, nice software which we have been exploring, especially our fashion students, for international experience is Trello. They are, teams can be created. Teams are looking at each other's work. They are sharing their feedback and assessment can be done. So the biggest question which comes to us is about the academic integrity. I would say there are many softwares, but what we believe in is rather than having one big assessment at the end of the subject, uh, we believe in continuous assessment. So there are uh, multiple assessment modalities which can be given. There could be different uh, timelines given to students to, uh, to show their learning. The most important point is about what we should do and what we should not be doing. So while we are on the online platform, we, we uh, believe that there should not be an over assessment first. And what we can do to help students is to actually be empathetic towards them. We can we did actually the mock sessions or dry run to help them to understand how these online platforms work or assessments can be done. We are also having extra sessions of dialogue with students to understand their problems, not only the subject related, but other. It may be understanding, it may be learning, slow learning, it may be technically they are facing some challenges. So faculty can be more empathetic and help students otherwise. I'm sharing these experiences because this is what is our success story. And in the end, I just want to request all our academic friends that we should be kind to our students and to our faculty. I'm ready to answer and uh, will be, I'll be very happy to answer to all your questions. As we said that these slides will be shared with you. You can write your questions in the chat box and uh, we will really be, uh, you know, happy to answer to your questions. Thank you so much. This is what I had to present and now I request our next participant, Dr. Lata, to give her presentation. Uh, fellow co-panelists, uh, Mrs. Seema, uh, Mrs. Nandita and participants of this webinar, good afternoon to everybody. I'm glad to be sharing with you some of my thoughts on the role and importance of assessment for quality education and the specific initiatives taken by SRM in the online virtual space. This morning, I received a WhatsApp message, and I'm sure some of you would have seen it. It's, it has a picture of a schoolboy with a heavy bag its back on his back, and it says, till now, now the school is in the mobile. I think this aptly represents the reality today. Uh, my presentation is more general in nature because I believe that while we would be moving into the online space, the acceleration, the acceleration by the COVID has uh, facilitated it, but there is a lot that will remain still on uh, offline. Very often when we speak, very often when we speak or of evaluating the quality of an institution. References are made as to how often the curriculum is upgraded, what are the teaching learning pedagogies, what is the infrastructure of an institution. Very little attention is paid to the assessment methods that are followed. We know that students learn differently, but are tested in an examination hall using the same, using uniform means. Presently, exam are at practice in many classes are best a checklist of what the student does not know more than what he really knows. If this is the situation, what really should assessment focus on? To my mind, assessment should focus on the intended learning outcomes, measuring the intended learning outcomes, something that the earlier speaker referred to. Assessment 
assessment should compare students' performance to a set of expectations rather than to the performance of others. And uh, for this, educators worldwide are moving from, shall I say, are moving worldwide from a learner-centric method to a more, uh, more uh, are moving towards an evaluation culture rather than a testing culture. Yeah, my presentation has come up. I thought I'll wait for a few seconds anyway. Uh, this first slide of mine represents the alternative evaluation methods that one can use. This list is purely indicative and gives a variety of tools that teachers can make use of in the classroom. While these are generally, we need to figure out which one is relevant to which discipline and what particular course we are teaching. I think a blend of these methods will make evaluation will make assessment more engaging and help build connections. For example, there are 30 kinds of alternative methods which are listed here. Maybe case right analysis is not very relevant to a mathematics students. Crafts and artifacts based may not be relevant to a literature student, but we should be able to mix and match so that some of these methods are put into practice. Now, how does one really put these into practice? Is it feasible? Is it practical in our classrooms, considering the size, the heterogeneity of the population? I think part of the assessment should be a part of the session plan. It should become a part of the session plan and last minute effort by teachers. So the entire evaluation should be entire evaluation should be strengthened in such a way that one is able to design, communicate the tools which be used. I need to get my I could you help me please? Oh. Get on the second slide. I'm going to try. I think maybe the signal is not very good there, but I'm going to try. Oh. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I, I want to get onto the yeah. second slide. Yeah. Yeah, the second slide. So, yeah. uh, as was referred to, we very often talk about uh, formative versus summative assessments. And uh, this is just a primer which tells us that as teachers, we need to know there is a gradation, there is a difference between what is evaluation, what is measurement, examination, and it's probably a combination of these which will help us truly in assessing students. And hence the what definition in the last, that assessment is gathering data points to monitor progress over a period of time becomes important. Having said so, the present formative assessments are turning out to be just mini examinations and where there is a poor cohesion with the expected learning outcomes. So this is a point for reflection as we move into the next phase of online assessments. My next slide I will be touching on is the use of technology. When we speak about the use of technology, When we speak about the use of technology in examinations, the reference very often is limited to computerization of the processes. But I think we need to expand this to include more, acad to include more academic aspects into the technologies that we use. And hence, I have presented some online, some conceptual tools which may be used. There was a reference to qualitative or descriptive answers being used for online examinations. And the first one, which is qualitative conversion maps, let me give you an example of what it is. As a student of psychology, uh, and let me take an example from psychology, that is, uh, if we were offline to ask a student, define emotional empathy and elaborate a situation where you best felt empathetic. In an offline situation, it would be a descriptive answer. But once you go online, I think we need to look at it in terms of the rubrics and the four points. And let's give an example. Now, defining emotional empathy is the first step. 
for which no points will be given to the student because a student could Google it or refer to a text and find the answer. The next point in the rubric would be find out a new item in which you felt empathetic. And if the student is able to find from a newspaper or a Google link, the one point would be given to the student. The third point in the rubric would be copy the Google link or upload the picture that you have seen for which a point would be given. And the final point is elaborate without using the words in the new uh, in the new sprint that you saw. So the point I'm trying to drive is when we shift from offline to online, it's not a mere replication of what we do offline, but much more application of mind is required as to which of these technologies and which of these conceptual tools will be used. Similarly, when it comes to capstone evaluation or question banks, they need to be tapped. In fact, I feel that question banks are very highly underutilized and sometimes it's just an array of questions put together, whereas could be linked with the rubrics of difficulty with the weightages that are given. And presently with the use of artificial intelligence and algorithms, it's possible to have on demand examinations and a variety of new features that are uh, that are happening. So the crux of the entire matter on evaluate assessments for quality teaching is to select appropriate assessment tools suitable to the discipline, content, learning objectives, and selection of technology, and not vice versa. It's not the technology first which matters. The next two slides are a few of the SRM initiatives that we have undertaken. SRM has been a pioneer in many of the uh, in the e space. And we have uh, centers which cater to different aspects. We have an e-lab. The slide shows you about the online real programming which happens their practice sessions for our students. And it actively supports the concepts for evaluate assessment, which is peer-based collaborative learning. Our average number of users is around 74,000. But when it comes down to e skill now this is, a, this is a, an online technical abilities examination uh, uh, and the examination is also done online. We have more than 7,200 students using the e-skills on our campus. Uh, some more initiatives that the SRM has done is we have an e-circuit, which is mainly for our engineering students, where online circuit simulations are provided, practice examination, it's a practice and and more than 1,800 students are using this. Well, Speaking of the e-access, we have our library right now in the COVID situation. We have provided remote access to more than 10,000 students uh, to use this library. Okay, I think that uh, Dr. Lata Pillay's internet has gone. Uh, Are you back? This in brief. Yeah, I'm here. All right. So this in brief uh, uh, summarizes the initiatives that SRM is taking and understanding that the move from online, offline to online will take time. I think teachers need to be organized. Teachers need to be sensitized to the Bloom's taxonomy, the outcomes-based ed education, et cetera, which lay the principles of assessment. In conclusion, I would like to say, end with a, uh, with a question by William Spady, who's the father of outcomes-based education. Somewhere he said that all students can learn and succeed, but not in the same and at the same time. Uh, with this, I conclude my presentation. And may I request Professor C, Professor Preeti Dewan to take over, please. Thank you, Dr. Lata, uh, and good afternoon, everybody.
assessments is always one of the most challenging aspects of academia regardless of delivery mode uh, the biggest challenge is disaggregating assessment as learning and assessment for learning from assessment of learning well it's a subjective and sometimes inconsistent uh, thing and some of the most important higher order skills such as critical thinking are hard to assess uh, now there are many digital assessment tools that serve different purposes i will be sharing with you some online tools and platforms that our teachers at pearl academy have successfully used uh, i hope you will find them useful as these tools will help you track your students progress and provide them with more objective feedback and grades uh, for the connection to stay stable i will be switching off my video and share the slides with you All right. Um, online assessment, I don't think online assessment should be difficult at all since online media offers many opportunities to create interactive, authentic assessments that engage learners in the continuation of their learning journey. Uh, there are some tools that provide opportunities for collaboration, some for discussions, some for student displays, while others provide new forms of connectivity and communication in the teaching and learning processes. I will be showing you each of these tools one by one, and let's see from there. Google Drive is an extremely user-friendly platform that can be used to take submissions for assessing them later. You can attach any file type from Google Drive or your hard drive to your assignment, including text, um, PDF, PowerPoint, um, Excel, image files, even video files. So this becomes really helpful when students have to submit their uh, assignments, and it is there to stay with the faculty. Now, these are live displays by using art steps. It's, it is a web-based environment that allows its members to create virtual art galleries in lifelike 3D spaces. But it can be used for more than art and not necessarily only for art and design. Virtual exhibitions may include two-dimensional artifacts and three-dimensional artifacts and also streaming videos. Um, now, when we start assessing, equal uh, weight is also given stress and concern is about grading those exams. So I think without shuffling any paper, grade scope makes it very easy to apply a consistent grading scheme with detailed feedback. This is an example of how grade scope scores the students. It is extremely easy to set up assignments for grading. And like I said, need not carry home any paper or you need not shuffle anything at all. A um, lot of us at Pearl, and I'm sure otherwise also, uh, uh, you know, uh, take video conferencing as a tool for jury presentation and peer review. We use a lot of Zoom and Blackboard Collaborate, the platform that we're on right now, for presentations and also for, uh, you know, peers reviewing each other. Let me show you some examples of what happens in our classroom. This is an example of a student giving presentation to teachers. That's another example of a student showing work to the teacher on Blackboard Collaborate itself. This is a student uh, um, you know, showing a video to the faculty that uh, he has prepared. So there are various ways that a student can show their work. That's the software that the student learned and is displaying on again on Blackboard Collaborate. Online grading and feedback on Edmodo. This is uh, Edmodo, which is uh, used for grading that allows teachers to communicate with students. It allows them to share content, create assessments, and give feedback. After your students have turned in an assignment, you can assess their submissions later on. Now, um, Google Forms is 
is well known and it's a widely used tool for student assessments. With Google Forms, you can create and analyze surveys right in your web browser. There is no special software required. And multiple people can work at the same time and every change is saved automatically. You can add pictures, video clips, even customize your form using Google Forms. You can have multiple choice questions and other questions. Even better, students and teachers get immediate feedback using Google Forms for assessment. The next one that I'm going to show is about quizzes. A lot of us also take quiz. Uh, quizzes allows you to conduct student-based formative assessments in a very fun and engaging way for students. Questions appear on each student's screen and they can answer questions at their own pace and review their answers at the end. Uh, the next is a very interesting software called Padlet. It's a platform. Uh, this is an example used by a faculty at Paul for assessing a research project on craft. It, this, this platform acts as a, an online bulletin board where students place digital sticky notes. These sticky notes can contain text, it can contain web links, it can contain uploaded files, photos, and even videos. Now, after they have uploaded that, um, for reviewing each other's work, we encourage them to discuss in a discuss in a discussion forum, forum which can also happen on Blackboard. Now, once the student posts their work, it is very important for the faculty to hold a discussion around it so that it does not stay with the faculty and there is some ongoing feedback and work happening on the assessment and the student would like to know that too. Uh, a discussion forum help everybody learn you know um, by getting into a conversation and develop critical thinking skills the next one is pinterest this is one of the most popular tools that our faculty uses since we are an art and design uh, college using pinterest they can say everything from photos to blog posts and anybody can use it by the way anybody can use pinterest uh, and they can save everything from photos to blog posts in one easily accessible and usable place. The students are encouraged to explore specific boards or to search specific terms to create their own boards. This is an example of a final year project of a media communication student who made a Pinterest for, for her faculty to see and give comments on and, and also for her peers to have a look at. The next one uh, was uh, discussed by uh, my colleague Seema as well. This is Trello. Trello um, is a great tool for project-based learning. Students can use Trello to take control of a project and outline the needed to bring it to completion. We used a lot of Trello for international uh, experience for our students. They can split up tasks and plan what they need to meet goals. They can move cards around as needed or as pieces are completed. You And you know, you can also track your progress in real time. Um, this is an excellent aid for peer assessment. This is an example of a peer assessment. Here, one student is giving uh, reviews to the other student and so on and so forth. All right. This is an example of OneNote which is um, for giving feedback. Now, feedback is an exhausting process. It involves superhuman amounts of time, energy, and effort. OneNote is an excellent platform that comes handy for especially technical subjects. It comes handy for other subjects as well, but we have used it a lot for technical subjects, and students love the way teachers give comments on that. It allows the faculty to give written, verbal, audio, and video feedback on the work submitted by students. So here, and we have a workspace on the right where the students can write and the teachers can write as well. The teachers can go live and, and mention therein what are the comments by her, and the peers can also do that. Um, Seema touched upon academic honesty. 
I think um, I will not uh, dwell on the various tools, but faculty do play a critical role in creating a climate of honesty, trust, fairness, respect, and responsibility. And students rely on the faculty to establish clear class expectations, one of which could be that all their assessments will go through or should go through a platform or a tool which assesses the output. I think it is very important that we develop academic integrity amongst our students as well. These tools are easy to use, user friendly, and gives authentic results showing the source of work or parts of the work that the students have uh, submitted. Uh, this last slide is tools, it talks about tools to prevent cheating in non online exams. Uh, I will leave this slide with you. Dr. Bijan had mentioned a lot about five of these things. Uh, so I will not uh, talk about it at length. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Dr. Sancheti. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Preeti Dewan. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Vicky, for this opportunity. Also, the Pearl Academy, as well as Meritrack, for joining us in this uh, wonderful effort. Uh, before I start speaking, I'll also try to share my files with you so that uh, we are on track in terms of time as well as the presentation. Friends, uh, I'm Sandeep Sancheti, Vice Chancellor of SRM IST. Uh, we know that today we are talking about a topic uh, which is assess to ensure quality education and therefore quality in assessment is what we are trying to talk about. We know that uh, from a management guru, very famous Peter Drucker, that you can't manage what you can't measure. So to measure the quality or to maintain the quality, we'll have to measure it and therefore the assessments comes into picture. We know that quality is also a subjective term. Quality cannot be very easily made. And therefore, we need to find out ways and solutions for that. And in that context, I will also say for the quality, we have a famous saying that say what you do, do what you say, prove it and improve it. And again, we see that, that prove it and then later improve it goes to doing some measurement, going, going, uh, going for some analysis, going to go for some, something to find out what is happening in the quality domain. And therefore, assessment becomes an integral and important part of education which we are delivering. We also know that the aspects of learning, aspects of progression, aspects of quality improvement are all associated with the what we call the ideas of assessment. And therefore, my co-panelists have shared lots of details in terms of the relevance of online assessments, measuring something, different strategies for assessment, some of the examples, tools, etc. I'm taking a slightly different take here, which is on the governance and the regulatory constraints. And also, since this is not limited to a current situation of COVID that we find uh, solutions tomorrow for the today's problem. No, I think going down the line five, 10 years, we should be able to implement or use online much more effectively. I think that is the mandate which we are looking at. And therefore, I'll be talking about a little bit of new tech and futuristic things, though they have been shared by my colleagues already. So I would say that the regulatory frameworks are always required. Without that, we cannot sustain. We cannot start uh, basically run a bigger system. Why? Because we are growing. We are becoming larger. And India is one of the largest setup. And including SRM is one of the largest uh, institutions of the country for higher education. We are generally bogged down by the regulators because of our own style or functioning, because we don't want own certain responsibilities. That's my take. I have seen in my 13 years in this position as a vice chancellor or equivalent, I never had a regulatory challenge as far as the examinations are concerned, whether it is AICT, UGC, or any other regulatory body. I think they are fairly accommodative. They are very, very comfortable. And they have not uh, pronounced much as far as the examinations are concerned. Take my word, yesterday also I was doing a search in case there are many new things for regulatory domain, from regulatory domain for examinations, I couldn't find too many things. Uh, the most important question, my dear friends, for me is who are the regulators? I think the answer is all of us. Who are the members of the regulatory bodies? we again are the answer for that. Who interprets them? Again, it's us only. And therefore, if at all there is something for the regulatory issues, I would say that large amount of blame uh, uh, or responsibility lies on us. 
yes i agree to some extent that we are top heavy we are too much top driven most of the faculty or the leaders academic leader will try to seek approvals from the vice chancellors or chancellors or certain bodies and they don't necessarily attempt their uh, uh, you know things uh, in a right way and therefore the changes don't come the ones who are sitting on the top probably have a frozen mind sometimes because they have seen it for ages happening in a certain way and therefore i would urge the younger people to make those attempts to change the rules and that's what will make uh, will make sure that the the accountability remains there the regulatory framework is not really suppressing us in some form or other and therefore i would say that the frameworks are generally flexible and they generally need clear interpretation and provided we have a spirit of the regulation in mind i am not saying regulations are not there but the spirit of the regulation should be kept in mind and in most cases it will succeed it will help us do certain things uh, once again i will say that the people like us who are in the senior positions are the most responsible for making sure that the regulatory issues don't become bottleneck i come to some specific regulatory issues and uh, there are too many uh, times we hear that there are two prescriptive things on the inhalation on the copies on number of hours for examination for interim percentage of marks for interim gaps between the exams the shifts and various other things i will take copies as an example i would say that no regulator generally says that copies are required beyond a certain time but we have a tendency to preserve them for long time those are nothing but uh, a crash for us because they are of no use no one is going to look at them for an odd court case we try to save them i think an ideal thing and we have been doing in my institutions i have attempted it very very successfully all those copies are shown to the students and given back to them as their own specimen so that later date when they open it they can learn from it what is right and what was wrong why did i get only 60 or 70 marks where my 30 marks were deducted i think no regulations will prohibit you from doing such things yes in certain cases they have said that you may retain it for one year or whatever six months may do so but if you are giving it on record i think that's also a very safe thing there are certain regulatory things on pass fail benchmarks there are something on time periods for completion something on back examination something for differently able persons which have come recently these are required because we are a large country and we cannot play with everything we cannot have an infinite liberty but i would say within that we have uh, all the accommodative uh, uh, regulations which will help us going ahead and therefore uh, uh, we need to look into our own setup that how to improve it and therefore we need to make sure that we have too much of centralization we remove that we also start owning and become more accountable generally even for a small attendance issue where the attendance may be uh, may be lesser than what is required i'll keep moving between one authority to another i think this should be this accountability or this completeness should be taken at the teachers level if at all there is something like that so in general i would say that uh, uh, the void which is currently existing as far as regulatory frameworks are concerned is about the e assessments the policies the strategies the process maps etc are not known so all of us will have to collectively collectively build these things because these are essential going ahead all the four presentations in the beginning probably talked a little bit about the e assessments and something of that nature so let's share some ideas let's make sure that we move into that particular direction so i'll have three more slides my dear friends uh, quickly conventional exam if i don't go for the technology based exams or other things i'll have to have the conventional exams i must say that they also lack transparency once again the example of copy is not shown to any of a, a, a student and therefore they don't learn why they didn't get full marks what was uh, which was wrongly interpreted by them and so on and so forth so the uh, to, in the name of confidentiality or secrecy transparency is compromised the results are overly delayed which we very well know i have seen in my life that the poor teachers tend to give easy assessments or marks and therefore uh, they get away with uh, what you call the wrong uh, uh, practices and therefore this is a bane of a conventional examination system poor accountability is another one uh, uh, the continuous evaluations which was said earlier are not necessarily an integral part of all the institutions at all the levels some good institutions are doing it we should make it for the benefit of the students however we should say that and we should agree to that no examination should would be perfect in future neither is the old one the uh, the current one and nor would the future ones examinations are always uh, subjective in nature sometimes and therefore we should have that tolerance rather than finding faults with any 
avenue or system which we get in place. And therefore, I'll come to the technology. Technology will be the new avenue for all of us. And we should use the uh, uh, technology to supplement what we have been doing. My colleague, uh, Professor Pillai, talked about some of the supplementing things which we are trying to do. So it's basically, it will remove the certain deficiencies or inequalities. But once again, I must forewarn you, technology will also be inequal. For example, inclusiveness will not be there because the computers may not be the same. You may have the best, I may have the worst. Internet connectivity may change, speed may change. Effectiveness will also change because one would have fully integrated. Someone may not have the affordability of something good. Privacy settings, no challenge in India, but outside world privacy is a very sensitive element. Abilities sometimes, in this case, it's not a my presentation ability or my knowledge about the subject. How am I able to connect? How am I able to set up things? So uh, sometimes in your subject assessment, some other abilities are also getting assessed. So these difficulties will remain. But take, uh, once again, my word, if you believe me, technology has a better potential to overcome any kind of challenges. And to convince you on that, let me give you just three names. Mobile communication is the first uh, technology which uh, overcame the challenge of communication. Second one is the solar technology which is overcoming the challenge of the uh, what we call energies and the third uh, one which is going to come would be the electronic or electrical transportation system all these things will make omnipresent and very very cheap and therefore i believe that the technology will help us in the examinations assessments and in everything which we do in terms of uh, 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 tests etc my final slides my dear friends is about the assessment some new ideas divided into three parts. The first uh, uh, two uh, blocks, continuous internal tests and online. We already talked about anytime, any mode, anywhere, any language, everything can happen. A continuous thing will give you better opportunities, better results. But when I come to the next two in the middle, left and right, the purple and the pink uh, uh, blocks which you see, group evaluations are a wonderful opportunity which happens only for the practicals but not for theory. I would advise to go for theory. It will help us raise the bar of average performance. This can happen by making the groups of students by dividing the class into certain categories based on their CGPAs and all that. And you can make sure that even the average one and below average one are held by the top ones. And therefore, group evaluation will be a good thing. Open book will be a very good thing because all your real life situations are nothing but, uh, nothing but the real life situations are open book examination only. And therefore, we have started doing it, but it's not omnipresent right now. And the next thing and the last two would be the, uh, the one on the last on left hand side and right hand side on demand. So a student should appear in the action when ready and when needed. I think that will be a wonderful feature. Some of my colleagues talked about that here. And last is something very unique. I thought of only yesterday that like we have Internet cafes, we should have examination cafes where anyone can walk in and there will be a sanitized uh, system available or uh, set up available and then they can appear in their examination. For example, today the biggest challenge in COVID we have is not the classes. What we have is basically about the examinations, how to conduct examinations. JE advance is not happening. CPSC is not happening. Our own in internal examinations are not happening. The, the other tests are not happening. So what will happen? So if examination cafes are created for future, not necessarily tomorrow, we'll walk in into that, tell my teacher that I'm going ready to appear in my examination and teacher will possibly give the examination to me. I think these are some of the ideas which I thought I should share with you. With that, I'd like to close. I'll be very happy taking on some questions from everyone. I'd also like to pass on the baton to Ms. Nandita Abraham, president of Parla Academy, who very eloquently introduced all of us in the beginning and also set the tone. Uh, on to you, Nandita. Thank you. I'm not sure whether my video is working, but thank you. That was fabulous. I think um, uh, every speaker brought out something really interesting, and I hope as participants uh, you found this very useful. I think what's also exciting is that uh, you will get copies of this, uh, of the slides, so you will actually be able to uh, look at the examples and go through all of it. Uh, the recording of today is also available on the Fiki YouTube channel. So if you have any other uh, colleagues or
friends, teachers in other colleges that you would like to share this learning with, uh, please let ask them to go to the Fiki YouTube channel. I and um, you can also, of course, uh, go there to refer it again. Uh, I really, I'd like to close with what Dr. Sancheti really put in my mind that it's actually our responsibility uh, as educators, as faculty members, and as leaders in uh, academics. Uh, we should not really wait for the government or somebody, RBCs, to come and um, you know tell us what to do. Uh, we need to continue to be learners. And I think that uh, all of you who've come here today have shown that, yes, you are interested in learning and in continuing to learn. Uh, so do continue learning. Uh, use these slides, use today's experience as a trigger. Uh, explore more and make sure that uh, each and every one of you become a really amazing online teacher or as good an online teacher as you are a face-to-face -face teacher. I had a look at the questions and most of the questions have been answered. We will continue answering uh, the questions uh, after the session is over, but uh, we are past one o'clock when we needed to end. So again, once again, I'd like to thank Fiki very much. Thank you, uh, Shobha. Thank you, Rajesh, Nidhi, and the rest of the Fiki team. And thank you to the Higher Education Committee of Fiki uh, that continues to work both with um, and, uh, with universities, institutes, and faculty members, and bringing things into Fiki and Fiki for uh, making this possible. Thank you very much.